Nation. Welcome to Inside My Victory, a podcast about the church, leadership, and creativity. I'm Pastor Gene. And I'm Pastor Kelly. And you can follow along with the notes we provided for you at my website, kellystickle.com. And if you have any questions that you'd like us to answer, any subject matter you would like us to discuss, please email us at leadership at myvictory.ca. Yeah, please take advantage of this. If you're a church leader or pastor and you have a topic you'd like us to discuss, uh, please email us your, your question and uh, we will love to take it on. You can email us again at leadership at myvictory.ca. Yes, we would. How are you, Pastor Kelly? I'm doing great. <laughs> <laughs> it's been a busy time. It's been a busy time. We, had, we just spent uh, the last um, week or a couple of weeks ago, we went to an amazing conference yes. in Red Deer, yes. hosted by Home Church and my friend uh, Jake and uh, Mullen. And uh, it was team church one day. Uh, it was a conference from 10 a.m. to 4 p.m., which it I appreciated. Powerful. It was so good. Uh, but it was, it was directly... Uh, linked or directly targeted to the church and to the church teams. And it was led by Pastor Kevin Gerald and the team church uh, crew out of uh, Champion Center in Tacoma, Washington. And it was awesome. It was so good. You know, what I really loved about it is that it was on one subject matter. Rather mm-hmm. than having a variety of speakers, they would speak about different things. He was really focused. It kept us focused. And it was all uh, Pastor Kevin talking about his book, you know, Proving Ground. Great Which book. is what we want to discuss today. Yeah, it was. That's a fantastic book. And again, if you haven't uh, got this book yet, I'd highly recommend that you get Proving Ground, the Proving Ground by uh, Pastor Kevin Gerald, and uh, it is available on Amazon or wherever you can get books. And I'd highly recommend it for every year. I bought a copy for each one of my kids, brought it home because it's about nine tests that all of us go through. Yes. in life at over some point, over and over and over, over and over again, <laughs> and as, particularly us as leaders, we go through these tests. Uh, over and over and over yes, again. Yes, we do. <laughs> <laughs> sometimes we pass them. Sometimes we. Sometimes we don't. <laughs> but it, it's a, it's a it's a great it's a great book because it, it he talks about the purpose of testing is to prove the product, yes. which which is great. I mean, you, th- you think about that and go. I'm thankful that they test airplanes before we get on them. Absolutely. Um, I'm thankful that they test the pilots before we let them fly yes. them. <laughs> you know, or they, they, everything that we have has to go through a proving ground before it is released uh, to the public and to be used. And so uh, the purpose of testing is to prove a product. The, the purpose of a test is also, uh, is also the, there's, res- well, there's resistance, there's going to be an opportunity. You know, James says that in, in James 1. That's going to be, uh, that's key. And then testing precedes promotion. So when we were in school, uh, before we graduated and got promoted to the next grade, we had to go through a series of tests and pass those tests in order to 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 be promoted to the next level. And that doesn't stop when we're done school. That no, is, and that I think sometimes life. we think we're just being tempted. <laughs> yeah, it's true. <laughs> Can I read that scripture? Yeah, I read that. It's, it's in amazing. James chapter one, uh, verses two through four. It's from the Message Bible. And it really is cool. It says this, consider it a sheer gift, friends, <laughs> when tests and challenges come at you from all sides. I don't like that part. <laughs> I mean, it's supposed to, we're supposed to consider it a gift when, when a challenge comes. But Well, we, can, we don't want the gift. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> you know that under pressure, your faith life is forced into the open and mm. shows its true colors. It's so good. <laughs> yes. So don't try to get out of anything prematurely. Let it do its work so that you become mature and well-developed, not deficient in any way. So good. Yuck. (laughs) (laughs) I thought that was, you know, of all the tests, that one is the one I think so many people end up hanging out with and not passing. The offense test. Yes, the offense test. Yeah, the offense test is is one that Pastor Kevin uh, specifically taught on. And I thought, you know— you know, read it in the book, and it, it was it was good. It was one that stands out for sure. But yeah. I thought when he taught it, it, it uh, came alive again to a whole new area, in particular to how it, it impacts us yes. as leaders, yes, and on our teams and in churches, and how uh, how easily we get trapped into uh, into offense. And it seems like today that mm-hmm. everyone is offended. We're in the middle of an election. Uh, here and so it seems like everybody's got uh, reason to be offended with one another. I re- I read a Facebook quote uh, today from a friend who said, "Hey, the election's almost over. Can we all go back to being friends now?" <laughs> I thought that thought that was awesome. But it seems like everybody is so easily 
offended. And so I thought yeah. it was very appropriate that he talks about the and offenses. And hard to say, okay, the offense is over, you know, and yeah. let's get back to being friends and getting back into what our purpose is. Mm -hmm. Those five things that he mentioned that were the reasons not yeah. to be offended, I think those were powerful. Yeah, the five reasons he gave uh, for not being offended is number one, it's exhausting. It is. Uh, and it really is. Offense is exhausting. <laughs> <laughs> it like captures your time. It just takes everything. It takes your energy. It, it takes, takes your the... energy. It takes your joy. It steals. It steals. I mean, you know, Nehemiah said that joy is strength. And, and if there's nothing will suck the joy out of your life like an offense. And, and that will steal your strength, will steal your joy. It sucks um, the air right out of the room. It does. When people are offended and you know it and they're in the room. And you know they're offended, but you have to move on. And yes. they're not over it. So yeah. Yeah. Well, so when he brought up that point, it's exhausting, then then you start to think, okay, well, um, am I exhausted? Am I am I tired? Is there somewhere yeah. in a particular area where I feel worn out or or tired? And and is the root of that exhaustion mm -hmm. actually an offense? That's that's he a dug bold into way to... this in a way that I think I wish we had heard this years and years ago. Yeah. But uh, I don't think that we we like to talk about it because sometimes there's still something kind of hanging on that we just kind of shoved out of the way. <laughs> That's so true. <laughs> Number two, there was it was distracting. Yeah, it's distracting, and it really is. An offense will d distract you. It'll take you off mission. It'll get you focused on on the nitty gritty or the mm -hmm. the, the nitpicky. Uh, you know, offense, whatever it might be, or the disappointment, or somewhere where someone failed to meet an expectation, or however, yeah. uh, whatever is causing that that offense, it'll it'll distract. And an offense, if 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 it's it's contagious, so if it yeah. comes onto a team or comes into a church, it'll distract an entire team or an entire yes. church from an, a mission, and it will become battles over over silly things. Which, I mean, if we were to look back in church history. The reason why we have so many denominations is because I think we, somebody got offended. Someone got offended <laughs> and distracted from yeah. the, the mission to preach Jesus, and got got offended and distracted over. And sometimes some even maybe uh, clarifying our vision sometimes is to kind of deal with that that idea of offense or not yeah. agreeing with whatever, and so we're just going to we'll fix that, you know, kind of yes. thing. Gosh, there's so much in that that and that whole distracting thing. I think a lot of times Kelly. It would, I know that when I've been offended, only the one or two times in my life, <laughs> I would isolate myself. Right. You know, so I would allow that to pull me away. Right. Ab absolutely. It does. It, you isolate, you pull back, it distracts you again from, from the bonding of, of a team and, and the needing of, of others to, to carry on. And it, it, does, it does take us off mission for sure. And the third thing that he brought up is it creates collateral damage. Yes. Uh, an offense will create collateral damage on a team. This is so true. I mean, it creates, it, it's amazing how easy it is to pick up someone else's offense. I don't oh know if you gosh. noticed that. but You know, that's the one thing that Joanne and I decided years ago is if she was offended by anything, I would not take up that offense. Right. Because if I did, I couldn't see clear enough to help her. Right, right. And we made that agreement years and years ago. That has been so beneficial because that collateral, collateral damage is, oh my gosh. But if you're not guarding against that, I mean, it's very wise that you and, and your wife guarded against that and made that determination. Because if you don't guard against that, it is so mm -hmm. easy to pick up another's offense or somebody else's offense in the church or somebody else's offense on the team yes. or somebody else has somebody else is disappointed in some way and they tell you and all of a sudden now you're more offended than they are yeah. over that situation. It creates it, like tribes of people that does. are thinking this way and the other way. And it's, it's like walking into a room, be like walking on eggshells because you're afraid now I'm going to make it worse yeah. you know, instead of just dealing with it. Well, it, it's what it's what Pastor Kevin used as an analogy when he was teaching this. He talked about don't drink the poison. He yes. Had, <laughs> you know, he had a, a, a glass of... of uh, a green something, and yeah, he did. <laughs> it looked disgusting, but <laughs> but he says he says if you if you are offended, uh, it's like drinking poison and expecting the other person to die. And I thought that was really good. But mm -hmm. but then he then he says he says you don't you can you choose to drink it, and and in an offense he says you're everyone's going to feel a, an offense. You're going to feel. Jesus said that in in Matthew twenty four. He, he says. And then many will be offended. So he he knew that offense is going to come, or that the opportunity for right. all of us to feel offended is going to be there. But what do you do with that feeling? What so should you do with that? What, feeling? what do you do with that feeling? Is is the stage two of of an offense? Is you can choose to live with it or to not live offended. 
And and that that becomes the choice. The feeling you're not going to be able to fight, but there is a choice that you can either live with this offense mm-hmm. or not live with this offense. And, like any other feeling, you don't right. have to live by your feelings. No, you don't have to live by your feelings. And and he, I like the statement he made. And he says it is possible to live unoffendable. And you know when you when you hear that, you're thinking, well, how? I like I don't know anybody that's that's ever lived unoffendable. But he said it is possible because the psalmist said in Psalm 119, 165, he says, Great peace have they which love thy law, and nothing shall offend them. I mean, that just that statement, nothing shall offend them, means that it is possible to actually live yeah. offended. And not not it's not possible to live without the feeling of offense, but it's it is possible to live and to choose to not live offended because you know, I think I want to say this too, that when you are when I'm offended and you're offended, if I take up your offense, then then someone else is going to be offended, not just by you. Yeah. They'll be offended by me too. Yes. So all of a sudden we create this, this uh, competition almost. Yes. And it divides the whole, the whole group. Well, and that leads us to the fourth reason that, that Pastor Kevin said to not be offended is you will attract other offended people into your life. Yes. Right? And have you ever noticed that when, when yes. some people that get offended, they all of a sudden have yes. these little huddles and, and they seem to attract everybody that, that is offended as well? And it seems, I don't know, they don't know. You can't, they're not mm-hmm. shouting, waving a sign saying, I'm offended, come you know, join my tribe. But it just seems like everybody just attracts automatically to others who have, who have an offense. You know, the thing I used to teach my students at the tech college was when you get a new job, don't hang out with anyone. Just watch and listen. Yeah. Because I guarantee the people that are already offended at that place of work, whether it's ministry or not, they will seek out that new person to see if they can get them on their side. Right. And you'll get sucked into that without even realizing what's happening. So true. You gotta be really careful. I think that's uh you definitely attract other offended people. Yeah, and then that leads to the fifth point that he said is that healthy people will start start to avoid you. Mm-hmm. Right, you'll attract other hurting of other offended people, other people with, that have drank the poison. Mm-hmm. You'll attract that to you, but then you're also at the same time going to repel yeah. healthy people, and healthy people will start yeah. start to avoid you, which is not a healthy and thing. And you cut yourself completely off of those who, who could really help you. Yeah, it, it is. It, I mean, it's such a powerful teaching. I think again, for each leader out there, for each pastor out there, uh, you you need to. Uh, read through the offense test or just so pay attention good. to these these things and ask yourself, okay, there's five reasons not to be offended. It's exhausting. It's distracting. It creates collateral damage. You attract other offended people into your life. Healthy people will start to avoid you. It, it is it is very, very important to, to live unoffendable, and especially in our churches and in our teams. And if you're a, a team member and your leader has to worry about offending you, um, you're a danger to the team. That's that's a, a very big, yeah. a very big yes. thing. And and you need to you know to ask. I think as us as pastors and leaders, we need to ask our teams who are you afraid of hurting, mm-hmm. uh, because that's usually somebody who is is very offendable, and that is not going to be someone that is going to be a benefit to the and team. And you're going to reproduce yourself. So if you if you act that way and you are that way, then the rest of your your team is going to be the same. Way. Absolutely. Yeah. And as a church, we can't afford to live offended no, because we can't. we can't afford to be distracted. We can't afford to get off mission Mm-mm. because we're the hope of the world. And we need to stay focused on that mission to reach every available person at every available time by every available means with the gospel of Jesus Christ by creating churches, unchurched people love, love to your team. Love.